Thank you, and thank you, Yuval, for inviting me to speak here and tell you about uh, Algin, uh, which I want to make a correction. It's the first Israeli biofoundry, so hopefully there will be more, but we're still going to be the first. Um, so I knew I could trust Yuval to give the definition for synthetic biology, so I didn't have to go to ChatGPT or Google to look for it. But what one important thing that I do want to tell you, can I use this? Is this okay? Um, so one important thing that I do want you to take from this slide is the fact that synthetic biology, and I think Yuval also t said that, is involved in everything. Everything we do today, materials, health, biology, echo, environment, like Ron just said, synthetic biology is involved in everything and can help with everything. And basically what I do want to tell you about today is the concept of biofoundry. And Allergen is the first Israeli biofoundry. So biofoundry is basically what's believed to be the driving force of synthetic biology in the world today. These are basically the, the word, the term biofoundry comes from bio, which I don't need to tell you what that means. But foundry is, is a term that comes from um, the world of plants that make, bio, that, that make chips for computers. So it's, a, it's basically a plant that makes something very small multiple times with a lot of automation because everything needs to be done very accurately, very small, and a lot of times in the same way. So this, the similar to that, basically biofoundries build microorganisms or organisms for a specific application, and we use a lot of automation. Um, you can see here in the pictures, these are examples of biofoundries from the world. Doesn't look like a regular lab or at least most of the lab that I spend time in, a lot of automation that does the work. Still, you need people to run those automations, but these automations allow you to do a lot of things in large numbers, so we can screen and, and test a lot of different strains, a lot of different organisms, and test a lot of different uh, constructs multiple times and in a lot of different conditions using those robotic instruments. So uh, the concept of bio biofoundry is, is kind of new and there's not that many. It, it's kind of a rarity in the world right now. Uh, so you see some example. This is not a full list, but the numbers are not that different. But what you can definitely see from this is that in blue, we mark the one that are governmental or um, academic, which are most of them, S uh, as opposed to the private ones that are in green, there's not a lot of those in the world. Allergen is one of them. So we're considered uh, um, an industry, basically. We're private. And, and there's one big example, which is Ginkgo, which is marked at, in blue. Uh, whoever does synthetic biology usually knows Ginkgo. So that's the first biofoundry. They basically termed the coin biofoundry. Um, and they're now already a public company. But they're private in the fact that they earn money, they're not governmental. Uh, so this is still a rarity in the world. Um, and the reason why this is a rarity is because of the reason that this is a very big investment. And this is what the IIA basically realized with a lot of help from Yuval. Um, and basically they realized that you need, uh, this is a, uh, basically an investment that is hard for private people to make because you need a very big starting investment and it's a big risk. Um, so what happened was that basically about two and a half years ago, three years ago, uh, the IIA came out with a tender uh, wanting to build basically the first Israeli ballet foundry. And what ended up happening is that the group of High Labs, which is a service company in the biology world in Israel with a Reichman Institute and Michael Eisenberg as an investor, formed a group, uh, um, made a, made a um, put out, a, a wrote up for this tender and basically we won this and this is how Allergene came to be. 
Uh, so we basically got 40 million shekels to build this in two years. Um, and then we started basically on March 2022, so about a year and a few months ago. Um, so what basically, what do we do in a biofoundry? So what do we do is, is usually when you talk about, about a biofoundry, you talk about an engineering cycle of design, build, test, and learn. So we do these cycles for every project that we do, which design means designing whatever you're going to build, building it, testing it, learning, and then doing more iterations. The one thing that we added to this, because we saw how um, basically what the industry in Israel needs is the scale up part. And this, with, with the um, increase in recombinant proteins and the need for uh, fermentation, basically we saw that there's a great need for what's called pers precision fermentation in the scale up uh, part. Do I have a, there's no pointer here, oh, there is. So basically you see here the system that we have, it's called uh, DASBOX Mini. It allows us to, to do basically high throughput experiments of um, fermentation and we can test multiple, um, multiple media, multiple um, strains in, in, the, in the system in parallel. Uh, so this is basically the starting of a part that is the scale up part. So Algen is basically built of four modules. The first module is computational design, uh, where we use computational tools to design our construct, design our strains, design the metabolic, understand the metabolic network, um, understand the structure of the genes and the proteins in order to build better what we want to build or what our customers want to build. Then we have the second module, which is the um, uh, construction of the host and engineering. So building plasmids, a lot of molecular biology and um, genome engineering and however you want to call it, um, molecular biology and, uh, and engineering um, of the strains and the plasmids. Number three is optimizations. We use a lot of automation in order to screen whatever we want to build. Um, and number four is the precision fermentation and uh, pre-production. So we get the project into a POC, which is called a proof of concept. So we're not a production site. This is a different tender that the IIA just came out with and there was a group that won that. So that's basically after us. So we go up to about 10 liters of fermentation, giving our customers a product, a proof of concept basically, and a prototype with a, with a protocol. Uh, so just to get into a little bit of the uh, implementation, so the way that we see it, there's two implementation, uh, especially in microbiology, which is what we're focusing right now, which are bacteria, um, yeast, and fungi, and algae. Um, so there's two implementation to what we do in, bio in the biofoundry. One is biomanufacturing, which is basically taking an organism, making it, and designing it to make whatever you want. It could be a protein, it could be a molecule. Um, you can see here an example of uh, like hyperspeed uh, engineering, which is a paper from uh, Kiesling that basically put in E. coli uh, an E. coli or yeast, I don't remember, but it, 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 he put 56 genetic manipulation of genes in the, in the cell itself, uh, another 34 genes in order to make one molecule. So that is something that has been done already in, that, in, in Kiesling's lab, um, but this is like a very hyper example. Usually we're talking about a few genes to, uh, to do this, but all kind of examples out there. And then there's also a direct microbial uh, application, which means basically taking the organism and making it as the product. So let's say a biosensor, when we're talking about bioconvergence, making the biological part of that instrument or whatever you want to make. Um, and the, the organism is basically your product. So it's not making your product, it's the product. 
Uh, and all of these basically can come from all kind of different um, sciences or uh, industries, pharma, cos cosmetic, agriculture, co um, clean tech, food tech, material defense. So we see all of these, all of these in different industries come to us and, and we sit down and try to design projects. So I can only talk about some of the projects that we are now involved in, but one of them is, the, is one that came out from the IIA. It's the Cultured Meat Consortium. It's basically a consortium that was set up by the IIA in order to um, overcome all kind of problems that this industry has now in order to grow and become viable. Um, so just a small summary of the process, you take cells from the um, animal that you want to make the meat from, you grow it, you, um, you basically proliferate it, you usually take stem cells, you make it um, proliferate into the cells you want, and then you have to go to grow it in a bioreactor. This part of the process is basically the most expensive part because you have to add growth factors. And for now, growth factors are extremely expensive. And this is why this part of the process, where you see the error of adding the growth factors, this process makes, the, the, makes a stake now that costs about $2,000, which is not viable, and we're not going to be able to keep this up. So the idea is to try to reduce this price by making growth factor in a different ways that is cheaper. Uh, after growing the cells, you have to put them on a scaffold in order for them to look like a steak. A and then you can cook it and give it to people to eat. Uh, so the part that allergen plays in this consortium is basically making the growth factors in microorganism, yeast or bacteria. I just wanted to go through very briefly the process. So what we do is we decided on the organism, if it's bacteria or yeast, and then we do what's called genetic optimization. So that's the first part where we design the construct that we want to express, we design the system, we decide where we're going to put it in that organism, and then we do iterations of changes in the sequence in order to get it to express better. And then after we finish that and we get our best candidate, we go to the process optimization of precision fermentation, we, do, we grow the cells in different conditions, we play with the, all the things you, have to, you can play with in the fermentation, and then you do analytics to see which cells actually express the best and how you can clean the, the growth factor the best. And the last part of it is basically what the consortium does is that we can give it now to the cultured meat uh, industry and to the companies, and then they can test and see if our product is, is as good as the one that they buy now. And, very high prices. Um, so I just wanted to finish with some example. We are a working company. We give service. We have a lot of projects. We have projects with industry and with academia um, and also with some government agents. Uh, and if anybody wants to talk, we have a booth here. And Hadar, our computational lead, is also here. And, he, and both him and I can answer any questions you have. Thank you. <laughs>